I am Mirek or Miroslav Umlauf, uh, now in the role of uh, Chief Data Officer here in Prague in our uh, originally Czech-based company, Avast. And today I will uh, share with you, well, a little bit of the story. Uh, and uh, because we are at the data and the machine summit, I will be focusing uh, largely on our data challenges. So let's go. Okay. I will briefly, slightly assume uh, that you already know uh, Avast, uh, the antivirus company. And if you don't know Avast, dep depends on uh, what location you are from, you may know AVG, AVG Technologies. Uh, these two companies uh, merged a couple of years ago. Uh, Avast acquired AVG Technologies. I am originally from AVG Technologies, and I have been always in charge of uh, data topics, if I put it this way. Uh, business intelligence, analytics, uh, data warehousing, well, everything was surrounded data. Uh, how I spent a lot of my time uh, in the company, it was uh, also uh, on acquisitions. We acquired many companies uh, even before we merged with Avast. Uh, and uh, this is what made the company uh, quite complex and often complicated. Uh, the company could be described, not just the revenue metrics or the financial metrics, as you can see, or the classic KPIs, but also as number of people. So today we have more than uh, 1,600 employees. And Avas today is a collection of more than 400 systems and petabytes of data. What we essentially do and what we have been doing, it was always built around a user or our customer. And uh, the three aspects of uh, people's digital life, the, uh, the protection and the privacy. And because we also acquired uh, some companies uh, uh, which did the, the performance optimization of, uh, of the computer, so we also added this uh, aspect uh, of uh, our services. And this is what in the back end is represented by a number of systems and also by uh, tons of uh, tons of data. And this is what was uh, the data was very important, has been and still is to our success. And let me briefly take you through that why why it is important. Uh, to our success. How we use data? This is the principal, uh, one of the principal questions in data strategy. <clears throat> and uh, for us, at the core of our product is the detection of the threats, detection of viruses, malware, all the bad activities that could occur to, to you uh, as users of digital technologies. So the ability to detect the threats uh, has been with us right from the outset uh, of the company. And of course, and this is what is no longer uh, uh, special, is to improve, uh, to use data to improve our products. Uh, we have been always digital company. So uh, we learned how to use data to improve our products, to improve the software, the user interface, and of course, because we are doing a business, so to acquire and retain customers. And last but not least, to manage the company. We were one of the first, very first companies which introduced uh, nowadays very popular freemium business model. So this is how many people uh, know uh, Avast or AVG for the free version of the of the product, and originally it used to be only free. Uh, this is the source of the value uh, for Avast uh, that we have access to tons of threat related data to the detections, which make the product better. Without this data, the product wouldn't be as good as it uh, as it is now. 
so that was one of the principal drivers to have a free version of the product to be able to have more data about the threats around the globe and to use this data to react fast against these threats. So this is how we capture the value. Uh, this is uh, what uh, makes uh, the users feel safe uh, to provide them the service. And it also gives us a barrier, uh, it creates a competitive mode because uh, to build an antivirus or any security product, you can't do it without data. So you need a lot of data and the more data you have, uh, then your detection abilities get better. Let's get a closer look to uh, the first use case of how we use data to detect threats today. And this is really a description on, of how it looks today. So it's really quite a fast process. It's less than 12 hours uh, to deploy and uh, a new model to add new features. And as I said, it's all about data. So we collect tons of data. And uh, the goal, the principal goal, as I said, is to have as much data as possible. And we use and employ uh, a lot of machine learning. And I could say also AI, the teams which operate this are really called uh, AI teams. Uh, and there are many people who contribute to our security backend, to our security engine. Uh, to expedite the detection of threats. So it's the local expertise we have, the security experts, but also the capability to uh, use machine learning to detect and classify threats and then so that other people can figure out the patches. This is the, the most important use case. This is the largest part of our backend infrastructure. And this is, uh, uh, how we have grown to where we are today. Uh, what is important to say and to mention is that uh, we started before there was any cloud uh, cloud provider. This is uh, the company is more than uh, 30 years old. Uh, and uh, this is used to be our advantage. Maybe right now it's our legacy that we have a lot of our own data centers. And for me, in this uh, role of data officer, this is quite a challenge because uh, we see other companies moving much faster uh, in uh, introducing new customer experience platforms, for example. And as we have a lot of our capabilities also in this area in threat detection built on in-house uh, created solutions in our own data centers. This is uh, this is kind of challenge uh, uh, we face right now. What we have, uh, and I will show you a little bit later, uh, what what the principal characteristics of our data strategy. Because as we started, we started as a antivirus only security company. Uh, we were always hungry, as many other companies, to improve our position on the market. And uh, as you can see, uh, to use data, to use data to build better products, to improve the detection of threats uh, of viruses. And there was, and I remember when I first joined this company, before I spent years in telecommunications, uh, something around eight years, and I actually wanted to uh, feel something faster. So that's why I decided to join a technology only company. And I was surprised how flexible uh, in all in good or, or in bad the company was. So to getting in a new tech technology, to try it, uh, to test it, to start using this was so easy, so fast. So this is what also defined us uh, as a company, very flexible in employing technologies and using data and of course, it uh, led and resulted in, uh, and you hear it probably on other sessions here, uh, into multiple versions of the truth. If I look at analytics uh, or the reporting capabilities, uh, but it was uh, 
in certain moment uh, of the life cycle of the company, it wasn't a problem. Uh, what mattered was uh, the, to have the ability to utilize data to build better products. But this has changed. This, this strategy, uh, which uh, I could call very offensive, uh, has changed. And here are the things which uh, happened uh, throughout the recent, I would say, 10 years. Uh, AVG Technologies, uh, in uh, 2012, we entered uh, New York Stock Exchange. So that was one of the first experiences of being suddenly public company suddenly uh, needing to comply with regulations uh, and suddenly also needing to be more transparent and organized. Uh, and I will not now go into detail. You can Google it yourself what then happened. Uh, so it was successful, quite successful entry. Uh, in the US, you go public because uh, you have strong top line growth and as soon as the top line growth is not there, then uh, typically you become a, uh, yet another target for acquisition. And this is what happened to us. Uh, then the mood uh, in the new merged company after the first synergies implemented was very positive, very strong. Uh, so then we acquired another company. In, and uh, it was called Piriform, a famous sea cleaner product. Uh, and uh, we learned, unfortunately, from outside that uh, the infrastructure of this company was used as a botnet, was used uh, by bad actors to cause bad things uh, on the internet. And so this was uh, one very strong lecture for us. Uh, that uh, acquiring companies uh, will require much deeper uh, due diligence and also on the technical side. And we also learned that this type of attacks, the, the value chain attack, uh, uh, could be something we could become a target also of because it was very interesting learning to see how the hackers got to the infrastructure, got to the engineering process of the company then we acquired that and then suddenly uh, something started happening. But again, as I said, you, you can also Google this. Uh, it was nicely documented uh, incident, uh, which got a lot of attention because uh, security company being part of the botnet, that's, uh, that's an issue. But then we continued our journey successfully. We delivered uh, the synergies, we merged the infrastructures, we merged the data platforms, we uh, embarked on the data lake journey. We had uh, all, suddenly only one data warehouse and one data lake. So everything was, for, for the data people at least, great. Uh, then we entered uh, London Stock Exchange in the same month uh, when the GDPR uh, came into force. Uh, and this is the year I will remember for a long time because uh, we we simply slept in the office uh, to get both the IPO done and also uh, to get uh, to be ready uh, not to screw up with GDPR. And it again, uh, it was hard. It worked. Uh, we delivered what we committed to. And then we got hacked. So another lesson learned. And another, you can again Google it. Uh, uh, and it was lesson second lesson learned. And then suddenly our board said, guys, uh, we need to do some things differently. So let's look at it. What happened after that? Uh, getting public with the GDPR. So in those, let's say, five years, uh, we really needed to create a dictionary of abbreviations. Uh, and I'm sure you know all of them. And there are actually more of them. Uh, but just highlighting a couple of those which we use almost on a daily basis. And if everything is about trust, trust of our investors, trust of our boards, trust of uh, the authorities we are as a publicly listed company exposed to. And uh, being a security company, having data from hundreds of millions of our users, we really need to be transparent 
for ourselves, for everyone who is our stakeholder. And uh, this is what uh, was quite easy for us to get to this state uh, because it became very easy to and cheap to collect data. So the companies uh, we acquired, uh, our engineers, everyone learned how to collect data. Uh, and we had this data lake, we still have it. And it was it became very easy to start feeding in data, to collect, to use it. And it helped us. It helped us a, a lot to improve our products. But then when I started getting closer to what we have for how long with all this, these GDPR expectations and other regulation, regulatory expectations, uh, maybe you know this series called Hoarders, but I was like, OK, this is uh, uh, this is getting serious. We have uh, a lot of data and people are excited to use it, but as we are growing, it's becoming already too much to manage. So we suddenly, after all these uh, events, uh, after getting public, after getting, uh, after facing the GDPR requirements, we suddenly needed new data capabilities. Uh, and I cannot go today into single, uh, capability one by one. Uh, maybe you can ask uh, questions uh, at the Q&A part of this talk. Uh, but what really helped us uh, was the implementation of master data management solution and the data catalog. This is uh, what uh, gave us, I would say, the visibility of all the issues we need to deal with. We dealt with majority of them, but being able to see what data we have, where, and who has access to it, how it is used, and then also being able to see, to have one single source of truth for customer. This is what, uh, and if I just look at my organization, this is what gave us the power to both deliver on business expectations and also uh, mitigate the risks that we discovered and uh, deliver on expectations of our board and of our investors. So the master data management and cataloging are the, definitely the two major projects uh, which uh, helped us to be in control and then to increase the maturity uh, of the company, the data maturity. So suddenly we find ourselves not having only the uh, offensive part of the uh, data strategy, but we suddenly needed to ensure that there is uh, security uh, attached to data, privacy. We need to, uh, having had so many technologies to start thinking about efficiencies uh, and being more in control and being a public company uh, means uh, also having a single source of truth for uh, KPIs. So if I zoom out from this, uh, we suddenly have the both sides of the data strategy, the offensive and the defensive one. And this is uh, what, uh, if I look backwards, what happened to us, because there are many other companies uh, which have been regulated or industries in the past before we got regulated, before we got public. Uh, and hospitals and banks, they are accustomed to be regulated. So they had invented and used already these uh, defensive uh, strategies. Uh, and this is what is happening with our company that we are moving more and more towards uh, more defensive strategies. But we are, it doesn't mean we are leaving the offensive uh, data uh, activities uh, because we need to be pervasive. We need to keep our competitive position, but we need to do it transparently uh, and in line with uh, the expectations of our customers and our, of the regulators. So what's next? Uh, we are uh, right now, uh, I'm checking just the time if I'm uh, good, still good. Uh, we are right now uh, in that phase when we are operationalizing. Uh, the data governance uh, and everything what belongs under it. And there are only two ways how to do it. We either automate the stuff, so we were lucky to choose the technology which allows us to 
uh, automate uh, the cataloging and some essential data governance activities. Uh, or if we can automate it, we have to integrate it through people. So this is where suddenly the term, which I in the past tend to ignore, I knew it from literature, but the term called stewardship, data stewardship, uh, is becoming more and more important. With our size, uh, 1,600 employees and many systems, uh, it's not about implementation of a data governance or whatever data technology to be in control. You really need people uh, to help you with that. With master data management, we are finally moving uh, to the point where MDM will be the hub where customer record is created. We started with this uh, safe approach. We created the registry of all customers from dozens of billing and licensing systems. This is what proved the value to all the skeptical people around me uh, that it makes sense to have this uh, reliable and highly available customer master because suddenly other engineering teams, uh, the teams uh, in business have the version uh, of the truth, have the ability to identify customer and also change the way how they uh, use other digital technologies because we still keep the single source of truth for the customers. And as you could hear on other uh, sessions here today, we are also going through the change uh, in how we build our data infrastructure and how we uh, do data integration, data analytics, and data collections. So if I am reaching the end, if I ask you uh, how important is the data for you right now, for your success, are you able to answer these questions? Do you have these discussions in your companies? And what is your data strategy? To be honest, I, a couple of years ago, I was uh, afraid of uh, using the term strategy because I knew it was important, uh, but I didn't have the answer. And when I tried to read about it, it was so abstract. Uh, but it's always about knowing uh, how we use data, where it is important, and what uh, offensive and defensive tactics uh, we use. It's not about choosing the offense or defense. It's about balancing. Uh, and it can be challenging if you don't have the technologies. You need to have the right skills. But uh, maybe it can look like this. Uh, 